This is a sample from our training at itdvds.com. If you'd like to learn more, please go to itdvds.com. There are two parts to DFS, and they can be used separately or together. The first is the namespace part. That's where we create a namespace like corp, which we're going to create so that it's accessed via backslash backslash our domain name, backslash, and then the namespace name. And then the other part is DFS replication, which we can use to replicate two folders that are on two different servers. So in this example, we're going to have a folder on the C drive of both DFS01 and DFS02 called Company Docs. There's going to be replication that occurs so that those two folders are always the same. We're going to create our namespace, corp, and create a folder target called Company Docs so that when our users try to access itdvscorp.com backslash corp backslash company docs, then they'll hit either DFS01 or DFS02 and have access to the company docs folder that will have documents inside of it that are being replicated so that they're always the same. So first we need to install DFS on DFS01 and 02. We could do it with server manager if I just right click on it and go to add roles and features. And let's click next, next again, next again. And it's into the file and storage services role. If we expand it out, there's DFS namespace and DFS replication. So in our example, we'll need to check both of these and go ahead and install them. Now we could also do this with PowerShell here. I'll just enter a PS session into DFS01. And we can run the install-windows feature commandlet fs-file server, fs-dfs namespace for the namespace part of it, and fs-dfs replication for the replication part of it. And we'd want to do this on DFS01 and 02. So I've already gone ahead and installed those roles. Now first let's create our corp namespace. So I'm going to go to tools and let's go to DFS management. Let's go over here to namespaces. We're going to right click create new namespace. And let's add our server DFS01. That'll be our first one. And for a name, we're going to call it corp. We're going to leave the default permissions. Let's go ahead and click next. We're going to make it domain based. We're going to enable Windows Server 2008 mode and this is the path to our namespace. Let's go ahead and click Next and Create. Okay, it was created successfully. All right, let's expand out our namespaces here. There it is, our corp one. Let's go to Namespace Servers, and we're actually going to add one. This is for redundancy. I'm going to add DFS02. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to add our folder targets here. This is going to be, if we go over to DFS01, you can see on my C drive of DFS01, I've got that company docs folder. So it's not shared out or there's, there's nothing special about it. It's just, just a folder with some documents in it. So let's right click on our namespace here, click on new folder. Let's click on add and let's go ahead and browse. We're going to browse DFS01. And you can see it's not currently shared out. So we're going to click on New Shared Folder. We're going to call it Company Docs. Let's go ahead and browse to it. There it is. And I'm going to go ahead and give permissions. All users have read and write. Let's go ahead and click OK. And click OK again. Now we could add DFS02 here now, but we're actually going to do that later. So let's make this one company docs and we can see the the full path to what we're trying to get to and you can see that matches up here I'll go ahead and click OK great and we can expand it out and take a look at it there it is now we should be able to access it let's go to itdvscorp.com backslash corp backslash company docs and there it is so as of right now when we go to this we're hitting the files that are on DFS01. Let's replicate these files over to DFS01 and add, or excuse me, over to DFS02 and add DFS02 as a folder target as well. All right, let's go over to our replication here. Let's right click, let's create a new replication group. So right now we're gonna do this piece here. We're gonna create DFSR replication here from our C drive company docs on DFS01 to C drive company docs on DFS02. Now these paths, don't have to be exactly the same, but we're going to make them the same. This is going to be a multi-purpose replication group. I'm going to call this replication group company docs, and it's for my itdvscorp.com domain. Let's go ahead and add our servers. So it's going to be DFS01, 
and DFS02. And I'll go ahead and click Next for our topology. We're going to do a full mesh. Let's go ahead and click Next. We're going to replicate continuously using full bandwidth. Our primary member is the one that has the files on it, DFS01. And let's add the folder on the primary member, which is DFS01 here. And there it is, Company Docs. Let's go ahead and click Next. Now we need to set the path on DFS02. So we're going to go ahead and enable it. Let's go ahead and browse. I have not created the folder on DFS02 yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'll select my company docs and click OK. Let's go ahead and click Next and Create. Okay, the replication group was created successfully. It lets me know replication will not begin until the configuration is picked up by the members of the replication group. So normally it takes about five minutes. So we can check this out here. Let's go to DFS02 and company docs. So it hasn't replicated yet, so we'll wait a couple minutes. Okay, and there it is. It did take about four minutes. So now the same exact docs are on DFS01 and DFS02. And they're being replicated constantly here. So if I add a new document to it, I'll add it to DFS01. It doesn't really matter if I add it to DFS01 or DFS02. It'll be replicated over. And there it is on DFS02. Great, so now we've got replication occurring. We've got our namespace set up. When this user or any other user tries to access this file share, then currently it only hits DFS01. Now we need to add DFS02 as a folder target as well. So let's go back to our DFS management and we'll go up here to company docs and let's right click on it and click on add folder target. Let's go ahead and browse. And if we want to, we can go to DFS02 we can see, okay, it's not currently shared out, so we need to create that. Again, company docs. Let's go ahead and browse to it. There it is. And I'm going to give it the same permissions that I have on DFS01. All users have read and write. And it lets me know a re replication group can be used to keep the folder targets synchronized. We actually already set that up, so we're good to go. Great, so that's it. So now users can go to ituscorp.com backslash corp and go to company docs. They might be hitting DFS01. They might be hitting DFS02. It doesn't matter. Whatever they read and write will be replicated over to the other server. So DFS is up and functioning. So at this point now, if I wanted to, I could add other folder targets, other file shares on different servers. But as you can see, DFS is pretty easy to set up. It gives us some redundancy and some load balancing with our file shares. And there are lots of different uses and ways to set it up. This was just one example.